Wolfpack Nation, welcome back to another episode. Before we get started, don't forget, we have this contest that we're giving away two tickets to the sold-out game at Carter-Finley Stadium against Notre Dame. And like we said in episode one, if that part one got gets 100 likes, we're going to give the we're going to give the prize pack away. So, before you get into this episode, make sure you go back and like it, comment so we can get that number up to 100 so we can give these tickets away. We we don't want them. Give them away. We want to give them to you. So, make sure you hit that notification bell, subscribe, do all the things that you can do so you can get this $500 prize, all right? $500 prize. We want to give them away to you. So, Let's go do it, Wolfpack Nation. All right, Ben, we're back to you, buddy. Uh, uh, we uh, in episode one we talked, uh, you know, a lot of uh, Notre Dame offense against Notre Dame, or excuse me, NC State's defense. Um, talked a little bit about our offense, but I really want to dive into the other side of the ball, talking NC State offense versus Notre Dame defense. And then, like I said in part one, we'll talk a little special teams, and then maybe talk a little predictions and a little Vegas. Even though I don't really gamble, but it's always kind of fun to talk about. So, uh, um, again, you know, NC State's coming off a 24-14 win against UConn. Um, You know, 24 points is, you know, about what NC State was putting up last year. Uh, In fact, I think that was our average last year was about 24 points. And um, this 24 points felt a little bit different because I thought we ran the ball really well. Um, You know, we only had like, I think, eight rushing touchdowns all year and we had three in the last game, uh, which was nice. And Brennan Armstrong had two of those. And uh, Michael alluded to that, you know, um, Arm- Brennan, you know, was very productive with his legs, maybe almost too productive, if you will, if, that, if that's really a thing, just kind of give him and go up on some offensive plays. But um, Ben, I kind of want to know, like, again, you know, we keep harping, it was it was Navy and, and Tennessee State, but uh, what have you seen from your defense? You know, I mean, you're only giving up you, three points a game, six points in the last, you know, the last two games. So it's kind of hard to knock in a defense for giving up six points total in two games. But if you had to maybe, you know, have some areas of concern or some things that, you know, maybe some tendencies or whatever that you've seen in the games, what what would you say would be something that, you know, Wolfpack fans should be looking for to maybe try to potentially exploit uh, on the defensive side from Notre Dame? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think the number one thing that sticks out is, how Notre Dame's defense has played early on in games. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I think I said it in part one, but obviously, you know, you play Navy, you play a triple option team, you're going to take a little bit of time to adjust to that. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of how that goes a little bit. Um, you know, that was a that was a slower game. There weren't that many possessions in that game. I think you I mean Notre Dame obviously they won 42 to three, so they scored six touchdowns. I think they only had the ball seven times. Um, so I mean, that was a a slower game in terms of obviously if that means Notre Dame only had the ball seven times, Navy only had it seven times or whatever it was. Um, But so, you know, there's been a little bit of a a slow start. I mean, I think, you know, Tennessee State moved the ball a little bit early on in that game on Saturday as well. Um, They played a completely different style of offense. I mean, they were kind of running the the read option, the spread, that type of stuff um, with, you know, a couple quarterbacks coming in and out, trying to keep Notre Dame on their heels a little bit. And Notre Dame, frankly, was. I mean, they they were giving up a couple of chunk plays, a couple third downs to a you know an FCS school. I mean, and so I think if there's something to be a little bit worried about is, you know, what's, you know, how long does it take for Notre Dame's defense to settle in? Now, to their credit, you know, they settled in quite nicely. Um, you know, in both games, though, I guess I would also mention, you know, that uh, those teams missed field goals a couple of times early on in both of those games. Um, so there were other times where those teams were able to move the ball um, at least a little bit here and there. Um, Notre Dame also fumbled a kickoff against uh, against Tennessee State that gave them the ball on the 20 yard line. That was one of those times. And of course, they, you know, they blocked the field goal on that one. So that was good. But um, so that's really that's really kind of I don't know. Again, this is the theme that you don't know necessarily because they haven't played a, a power five opponent yet. But I guess the other side of that coin is if you look at Notre Dame's defensive depth chart, um, I feel like I'm going to name darn near every, every guy here, but like, (laughs) you're going to like, see, you're going to see graduate player, Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to see senior, you're going to see it with the exception of a few different guys. I mean, they picked up John Jean, I mean, Jean Baptiste, um, from Ohio State, graduate transfer, Howard Cross up front, graduate um, graduate player at Notre Dame, has been there in the program for five years. Riley Mills is a senior. Maris Leofow and J.D. Bertrand 
and Jack Kaiser, they're three um, linebackers, graduate players. I mean, you get my drift. Cam Hart at cornerback, graduate player. Yeah. Um, their nickelback is a graduate transfer from Oklahoma State in uh, Thomas Harper. Um, so you you get my point. That's the theme. So these guys have been there before. And then the guys that aren't those are, are Ben Morrison, who was one of the best probably freshmen on the defensive side of the football in the nation last year. Um, so they've got they've got the horses, you know, like you, you wouldn't expect, um, you know, you don't look across and you don't necessarily see some of the, you know, the Isaiah Foskies and, and that, um, you know, of years past, but you do see a whole, you know, one through 11 and plus a little bit of depth at every position, just solid, solid guys. Um, so, you know, they're going to be consistent. Um, Again, you know, who makes the plays in the big game, I guess, is kind of what you're sort of looking at with some of these guys, uh, because some of them have played for two and three years. They were depth players that have moved up the depth chart to be starters. Now, now let's see them, you know, be starters in a game where you got to play, you know, 45, 50 snaps on the defensive line, for instance, uh, and see how they respond to that. That's what Notre Dame fans are kind of looking to see is how those guys, you know, outside of the linebackers who, you know, have played every snap for the last three years, pretty much. Um, you know, the rest of the defense, how are they as every down players? Yeah. And I think that's a, you know, a great point that, you know, you, you, you were, you were alluding to and getting at was that, you know, the moment won't seem to be too big. These are, these are guys that have, you know, played a lot of snaps, you know, even if it all be it for other schools, the fact that they've, you know, been there, done that, they, they won't, you know, get, you know, wide eyed and bushy tailed and, you know, get rattled on a play if they give up, you know, like you said, a chunk play or whatever, that they can come back and fight for the next, um, the next, the next play. Uh, the one thing that I will say again, and we mentioned it, is you know, the, the advantage for state, and, and it's not a, it's, it's not really an advantage. It's more like a tangible advantage. If you, if, if that makes sense is that we played on a Thursday night. So we get a couple extra days of prep. Um, we, you've, you as a Notre Dame have played two games. So there's a little bit more film to look at. Um, and that there's a little less film for Notre Dame to look at for state with only one game uh, of, of, um, of prep. So, you know, with all that being said, I, I, I think I give some of the advantages at least on paper and, you know, you obviously these games aren't played on paper, but you know, if you, if you're looking for anything to kind of move the needle, I, I do like the fact that state has a little bit more of that available to them. Michael, do you do you see that as anything? Am I just kind of making this up in my head? Kind of give me what what you think on that. Um, well, I think some of that advantage is kind of neutralized with with Navy being the first game because sure. you know our offense is nothing like Navy's. Um, so you're not saying we're so going to come you, out and run the triple option on Saturday? Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. But I, it, it's just there's not much you can really look at, at least offensively, from that Navy game and be like, okay, we yeah. can we can attack them like that because it's, it's totally different. Sure. So I'd say that kind of neutralizes some of the advantage. But um, at least from, a, um, you know, Notre Dame not having as much film on state, especially the new offense, I think that is an advantage that way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I would, I would agree, and like I said, hopefully we held some of this stuff back um, right. for for Notre Dame. But uh, so the one thing that, um, and again, this is new for for Michael and I too. We've only got one game of footage from you know this new offense, and yeah. um, you know yeah. some of the things that we liked, and some of the things obviously that need to be cleaned up from from a game one. Um, perspective you know those game ones there's always going to be you know some some rough film uh come you know the next day but michael what what were you impressed with that you know that something that we did well and then we can you know continue that on uh against notre dame like yeah yeah, I, i mean running the ball i mean that's that's been a struggle for us the last couple of years yeah and i know a lot of that was uh brennan armstrong making something out of nothing but you know that's part of that's part of the advantage of having a mobile qb yeah. is him being able to contribute to the running game so you know we had over 200 yards of of uh on the ground yeah um so i that's definitely that was definitely encouraging to see yeah. um you know that's that's the the defense has got to 
account for a running QB. So, um, you know, that can open up things for, for other players too. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dressup Insurance Group, that has your whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Dressup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Dressup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. And then, I mean, I guess kind of Ben, for you, and I meant to ask you before we kind of dove into that last question is, um, what would you consider is the strength of the Notre Dame defense? I mean, you you know, you kind of you kind of kind of answered it without answering it with all the, the leadership not not leadership but the the, the seniority, if you will, of the yeah. team. But uh, you know, maybe a position group that. I, I guess you know, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll ask it this way. Give me give me your best position group and your weakest position group. How about that? And then we'll maybe kind of tackle it from there. Yeah, I mean that's actually a really difficult question to answer sure. uh, because you know, like I kind of said, you know, if you look across Notre Dame's defense, you know, one through eleven, um, you don't look out and say, okay, that guy's the liability, and you know, just on the other side of that coin, you don't look out and say that guy's their best player. You know what I mean? So sure. um, that's, that's kind of, I mean, I would say probably their best position group. If I had to pick one and rank them would be the linebackers. Uh, Maris Leofau is kind of the, I don't know. He's the heart of the Notre Dame defense. He's sort of the face of the Notre Dame defense. He's a graduate player. Um, JD Bertrand has been around forever and is kind of the middle linebacker. He's a graduate player. Uh, he's going to lead Notre Dame in tackles. I mean, that's for that's, I mean, chalk it up right now. If you're placing prop bets, um, Jack Kaiser, kind of the same thing, you know, um, those three guys, you know, Maris Leofau was injured a lot of last year, but Bertrand and Kaiser pretty much play every snap and Leofau when he's not hurt plays every snap. Um, Notre Dame doesn't really rotate guys there like they do the other position groups. Um, so those are the guys that, you know, you feel pretty good about. Um, Leofau has played really, really well in, in, in two games per trend. Like I say, he's just, he's just a solid dude. Um, not a freak athlete by any means, but just a solid middle linebacker. Um, from there, I mean, you look at their defensive line, you feel pretty good about those guys. Like I say, you got graduate transfers, not tr- graduate transfers, all of them, but graduate players and, and seniors across that. And they're deep. I mean, I look at, you know, the two deep at every, at all four defensive line kind of spots. And it's like, yeah, these guys have been in the program for a while. Yeah. Um, so they're probably next. Um, but that's not without saying, you know, their, their secondary's not exactly bad either. Like Benjamin Morrison, I can't remember how many interceptions he had as a true freshman last year, but it was a bunch. He picked off Clemson a couple times in the Clemson game as a pick six in the Clemson game. Um, you know, Xavier Watts is a kid that, uh, you know, he's, you know, he came in as a wide receiver and then he played running back. And then they moved him to defense and he's starting at safety. He's probably the guy that you look at and is like, I don't know, you know, like what is he like as an everyday safety? But, you know, Cam Hart, graduate player, really good player. He's going to be an NFL player. Um, he's at least going to get NFL looks at least. Um, I don't know. So I, I guess I would say, like I say, linebackers, then defensive line, then then secondary. But there's not very much separation between those three sure. position groups. Yeah. You, you you mentioned the depth, and I think depth for both teams is going to be a big thing come Saturday. The weather is going to be south hot. I guess uh-huh. I'll keep it PG. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, pretty, pretty warm and toasty. Um, they're looking about 88, 89 with a heat index of about 96, 97. So, um, you know, you didn't talk, you know, you kind of mentioned that, you know, you don't like to rotate a whole, whole lot, but I think there's going to be a necessity for it uh, given the weather. So that'll be that'll be something to play, you know. Or keep an eye on as the time as the game goes on. You know, you know, you have a team in Notre Dame who, you know, plays up in Indiana they don't get that that hot humidity um not to say that they can't fight through it but you know it, it is something to to keep in mind um it's you know so, that south that south humidity I don't know Ben where do you where, where are you uh where you where are you calling in from 
I live in Ohio, but okay, uh, okay, yeah. same as South Bend, same, same, yeah. same climate. So. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, it's a little different, and I'm not saying like you know these Notre Dame kids come from all over the country. You know, they're right. they're a program that recruits. You know, they're not a regional type thing. So, but uh, you know, always something worth mentioning. And I think you know you kind of were alluding to that. You know, maybe the weaker of the non weak we'll go with that. We'll go with your words, right? Because you're you're saying right. that your defense is strong, but. Uh, um, I, I am really curious, and, and Michael mentioned it earlier. Um, I'd like to see State go over the top a little bit more than than we did against uh, UConn. Um, and I think I think we'll have some opportunities. I think Notre Dame will try to maybe try to take away Brennan's legs uh, as much as possible, and then that might leave some one on one opportunities um, for for State to take advantage of. I know the couple of times that State did try to go deep, we we completed one. We got a PI on the other, and we really maybe had one other time we tried to go deep, and it it just we didn't really push the envelope. And um, I I think that's something that's going to change this game. I think I think you're going to see the NC State offense um, go after Notre Dame's defense. I don't I don't think it's going to be um, you know uh, 46 rushes. I think is what we ended up with against uh, Connecticut and something like that. It was. It was, it's been a long time since I've seen State run the ball that many times. What about you, Michael? I can't really – I really can't remember a time where we ran 46 times. Yeah, it's a lot. Maybe back in Reggie Gillespie days. Yeah, but yeah maybe. That was a yeah, lot. it's been – I mean, yeah, that's what – and I said at the beginning, I'll be interested to see how they play it. I imagine they'll – like you said, they'll try and take away Brennan's legs, um, but we know he's not afraid to, to, to push it push it Correct. deep. Um, right. I mean, we said <laughs> – a ton at UVA, so it will just depend on on the receivers versus the DBs at that point. If they're playing, you know, if they're playing them straight up man one on one, then yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's something that um, we can take advantage of if 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 Notre Dame does take away Brennan's try to take away his legs. Yeah, Ben. What about for you? Is there something about the NC State offense that you kind of, you know, you know, whether you've seen this year or in past years or something with what with what Robert and I runs that maybe would concern you from a Notre Dame perspective? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, not, and I don't mean to sound pompous when I say this. No, sure, uh, you're but... from Notre Dame. It's okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, I deserve that criticism. No, it's but, all good, brother. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, um, I don't know. Like, I, I think as Notre Dame fans, you know, the, what I'll say is this. Notre Dame plays, they play the Navies of the world. They play mm-hmm. the USC's of the world. Um, yeah. They play, Very so they different. and they play everybody else in between. You know sure. what I mean? And yeah. so, yeah. Um, I guess Notre Dame's seen it all, I guess. Uh, Al Golden, I mean, this isn't exactly his first rodeo as a defensive Mm -hmm. coordinator. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't necessarily look at certain things and say, you know, that, you know, this particular schematic thing is going to necessarily be bad. I guess what I would say, though, is, you know, Notre Dame has at different times struggled with uh, mobile quarterbacks. I mean, it's just a different, you know, mobile quarterbacks who can act. It, It is tough. Yeah. And I mean, um, legitimate dual threat quarterbacks, I guess. I mean, right. there've been, you know, you can call a quarterback, a mobile quarterback, but if he can't complete a 10 yard pass, then, you know, what good is that? You know what I mean? And I don't yep. think Brennan Armstrong is that. In fact, Notre Dame actually, I think kicked the tires on before Sam Hartman committed, um, kicked the tires on Brennan Armstrong in the transfer portal. So obviously that's a guy that they like and respect. Um, so, and I believe he was, I think he was dinged up the last time Notre Dame played Virginia. Um, so I don't know that he played, much if at all yeah um I, that yeah. game I'm i think he got a concussion i think okay. it might have been the game i think when Virgin- we played virginia in 2021 i think he may have gotten knocked out in our game and then he missed the notre dame game the week okay. after i think that yeah that i was trying was- to remember that detail i know notre dame yeah i looked up the score it was 28 to 3 but like i said i don't think uh i don't think armstrong yeah, I don't played, think played so yeah um, and that was the 12th game probably so that was like remember that because he, cause he played 11 games and tore it yeah. up and yeah mm-hmm. um yeah, so I mean that that's a that's a fair fair analysis there, um, and, and it, that wasn't you know any any stretch of the imagination a gotcha question like yeah. you said. I mean, you guys have Ohio State on the on the schedule this year, and you <laughs> you know you 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 play your fair share of of top fifteen top twenty opponents every year, and uh, I I I think that the the one thing that you know NC State and again it's 
it's hard to do these previews, you know, one, two, three games into the season because you, you just haven't seen it all. And, yeah. you know, the, the teams haven't got their full stride. And, um, you know, what, what State's looking for is just a continued improvement on, on the offensive side. And they want to see, you know, State wants to see receivers get open and make catches. Uh, that was kind of a concern, a couple of drop passes. Um, and, and and when both of these teams step up in competition, the 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 the, the line or the – what is it? The, the 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 availability win margin is much thinner. You know, you you can't be making mistakes. And the one thing I will say um, for state on the state end of it is, you know, we played a really clean ball game against UConn last week. We had one penalty for five yards, which was a false start on a wide receiver and uh, no, no turnovers. And I think if we can kind of duplicate that, um, if Carter Finley can be loud, maybe get a couple false starts, some some you know procedural things. Um, that that can maybe shift the pendulum a little bit. Um, you know, again, w- w- when these games are so tight, you're looking for any kind of advantage. And, and I think the 12th man at, at Carter Friendly can, can do that. Um, I guess the next question or the next thing I kind of want to talk about is, is special teams. Um, ben, you mentioned that, you know, you guys had a blocked field goal uh, against um, Tennessee State on Saturday. Um, how is your kicking and punting because uh state's working in uh michael punter uh, uh punter punter he, from last year punter from last year he's, not the whole year but he took over like three yeah. quarters of the way and yeah. new new hauser new is that kicker. his name new caster new caster yeah um so we have um you know a holdover punter there we, we have a new kicker he went one for two uh on uh, thursday he had a 44 yarder and he missed a 49 which was his first yeah. kick at nc state he's a a graduate transfer um he's been at a couple places but most recently he was with western kentucky um so just kind of ben talk about your your end of the uh, special teams um program yeah yeah i mean uh <laughs> that's a really hard question to answer mostly because like I say I alluded to um the Navy game you know they scored 42 points scored on 6 out of 7 possessions the other possession they missed a field goal um they have a transfer graduate transfer kicker Spencer Schrader who came from USF I believe golly yeah it's USF um he's so he's attempted one field goal I think it was I don't know 45 yards or so missed in Dublin um but six for six that on, was some crappy weather and maybe yeah. some crappy sod and you know it looked, sure it looked it looked messy so um yeah i got that you. is true yeah. so it's hard to really tell you know yeah, for I mean, sure they, they obviously went out and got a graduate transfer because they felt good about him you know mm-hmm. so i mean that's kind of that um you know uh they haven't punted the ball a lot again they played <laughs> navy and yeah, tennessee sure. state so they haven't punted the ball a lot um so not really any i mean again if you're talking about question marks and you know like you say, if you're if you're trying to, uh, as an NC State fan, think of like, okay, where's the advantage going to come? You know, well, Notre Dame hasn't had to make plays on special teams to to beat the two teams that they beat. They, it was just kind of let's field a kick and make sure we don't, you know, fumble and that type of stuff. Notre Dame fumbled a, a kickoff against uh, Tennessee State, although, um, you know, if you ask any Notre Dame fan, there was a little bit of helmet to helmet dirty contact on that. I mean. In all seriousness, the kid left with a concussion afterwards. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the proof is in the pudding, yep. I guess. But um, so I, I, that's a big question mark for Notre Dame. They, they haven't been tested there. Um, and so, you know, like I say, if, if you're looking for, for something that to, you know, for one team to get an advantage or not or whatever, you know, that's that's a place where NC State maybe has a has a chance to do something like that. Because, like I say, those those Notre Dame special teamers just haven't been there a lot. Yeah, no. They haven't been challenged. Right. And I mean, the the one thing I guess that I would say is that Notre Dame blocked a boatload of kicks last year. However, OK, special teams coordinator left to go to the Indianapolis Colts after last season. So, um, you know, maybe that's not the same uh, for the longest time. The the joke, I guess, among Notre Dame fans was that Notre Dame fans or Notre Dame was fair catch you um, on punt that's returns. Like it was just kind of like, let's just send the guy back there. That's going to catch it. And then just fair catch it. And we're not going to deal with it. That was kind of a Brian Kelly thing. Um, it was like, it's not working out too well for LSU. They've been fumbling some punts the last couple of years. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I mean, since Marcus Freeman has taken over, they've, I mean, they return punts now, so that's good. But, um, like I say, unproven group. 
Yeah, no, and, and, and you know, and that, this just came to me, you know, NC State ends up winning the Hurricane Bowl on a blocked punt, so that, you know, <laughs> I, I don't I don't see it being coming down to that, but, uh, you know, that is something that NC State does pride itself on is is uh, special teams. Uh, we, we typically get, you know, one to two blocked punts a, a year and a couple blocked field goals a year, it feels like, so... Um, you know, who knows that maybe something like that, you know, is the, is the difference, difference maker in, in, in a ball game that, which leads me into Vegas, uh, Vegas, uh, I believe this game opened at eight and I think it's down to six and a half, I guess, depending on who you, who you believe, um, just kind of, you know, and I'm not a gambler, so like, but you know, it's kind of fun to talk about anyway. Uh, Ben, for you, you know, Notre Dame goes on the road. You know, like I said, anywhere from six and a half to eight point favorite. Um, just kind of give me your thoughts on that. Is that right? About right? Do you think it's a little high, a little low? Uh, um, I don't know. Kind of the the joke about Notre Dame is that good teams win and great teams cover. I mean, that's something that Notre Dame fans <laughs> always love to say. Uh, if you ask a Notre Dame fan, they'd probably rather it be a close line because Notre Dame seems to play better in games where the line's close than as opposed to you know they're supposed to win by twenty and then now you're sweating out a three point victory over a team. Um, I think that feels about right. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns about Notre Dame um, just because of who they've played so far. I mean, we've acknowledged that a bunch of times, and I think any rational Notre Dame fan would say that. Um, I, I know they're rational, some, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there aren't many. I mean, no. I don't think I'm rational I don't rational think we have many rational state fans. So I think, I think, uh, I think, I think that line is even if we can yeah. use a Vegas yeah. term. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think I, I'll tell you, there are some Notre Dame fans that think that that's ludicrous. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, those Vegas people know stuff that we don't know or something. I, I, I'm always wild by how that works. Um, Likewise. Yeah. And so yeah. I, 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 you know, if I'm placing a bet, which maybe I'll do, maybe I won't, I don't know. I, I think I would take Notre Dame to win by a touchdown. Um, but you know, because yeah. Notre Dame does this all the time. Like they, I mean, they're notorious for the the slow start, the the game that kind of like goes into the third quarter and it's kind of up in the air and then it's one or loss right there at the beginning. They either just, you know, score three touchdowns in two minutes or it goes the other way. So that's that's been Notre Dame's uh, blueprint a lot, it feels like. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. What about I, you, Michael? What are, your, what are your thoughts on the line? I think that's, um, I, well, I was a little surprised. I thought it would be maybe closer to 10. Likewise, um, yeah, I thought it'd be higher. But point. um, looking back in the last three years, as a home underdog, state is four and zero against the spread and three and one Upright. win loss. Yeah, so um, that's probably factoring in that that home field advantage. I mean, there's definitely a home field advantage we have. Um, so that line probably reflects a little bit of that, like one or two points, which which is right in line with it being, um, you know, right around a touchdown. So sure, sure. All right, Ben. So we got to do two questions. Uh, Notre Dame wins if they're able to be balanced on offense. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, other than the obvious, Notre Dame loses if. Um, I think they they lose if their defense um lets Brennan Armstrong do whatever he wants on offense. Essentially, um, you know, I think they'll be able to find a way to stop something, I guess. I mean, they'll, they'll be able to maybe stop the inside run, but then, you know, if you're allowing rollouts and letting them get outside the pocket and, you know, essentially RPO it, I guess, to a certain degree. And, you know, you can pick up six yards or he throws it downfield for 20 or, and you're caught in between those, those things all game, then that's, that's probably bad. And like I say, if Notre Dame can't run the ball, then, then that's probably, that's probably their recipe for losing a game. And the last question I have for you, and then I'll throw it at Michael as well. Uh, give me your prediction. Um, I think it, you know, I think I kind of, I said it without saying it. I think Notre Dame plays a lot of these, these type of games, I guess they're, they're used to this. And so we've seen this, we've seen this movie before. Um, I think, uh, we're going to watch a close game into the, you know, late third, early fourth quarter. Um, in the end, I think, you know, Notre Dame makes a big play or two and pulls out, you know, about a seven point win. And then Michael and myself, I believe Michael in our season preview, you, uh, well, yeah. you had us winning. Did, has that changed? <laughs> uh, 
I don't think so. Um, got to for consistency. <laughs> I mean, I got already receipts that said you. Yeah, there's already receipts that said you you had us winning. You can't hedge now. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I mean, if it, if it, if we do win, like I said, it's going to be because our defensive line yeah. and linebackers are able to to stop stop the Notre Dame run. Um, and we have to force Sam Hartman to pass a lot, and he hasn't had much success doing that against Tony Gibson's defense in Carter Finley. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, I mean, for score prediction, I'll say I think it will. if we win, it'll be low scoring. I'll say like a 27-24 NC State. But like I said, I think the line that came out is is – is about accurate for kind of the general feeling. So, I mean, if this, if this game ends up, you know, a 30, 30 to 23 Notre Dame victory, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. Um, I was just, I, I, I saw the, the, the line itself, but I didn't see the over under anybody know that by chance. Again, <laughs> I'm not really into gambling. I was just kind of was curious to see what, what they think, how many points are going to be scored in this thing. Um, Cause I'm kind of with you, Michael, I think, I think this game will be in the twenties. Um, I just know state's defense is really good. Um, I and and Ben, this isn't a dig at Notre Dame. I just haven't seen enough from them because of the competition they played. So I don't think a lot of people know who they really are yet. Um, so I, I I do have state winning, um, but it's going to be like by less than a touchdown if state wins. And, and um, if Notre Dame wins, I think it's going to be double digits. That's just the way I I see it. Um, so I, I had uh, a score prediction similar to Michael. Um, I had like twenty eight twenty five. So over under is forty nine and a half. So my score is over. Right <laughs> so there actually, no, go. just under. Yeah. No wait, no, no over. twenty eight twenty five yeah. would be over. Told you, so, yeah. I told you right the first 50. episode. <laughs> high school math's hard. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. So Ben, uh, we we thank you so much for jumping on with us tonight and uh, covering this preview. It'll be it'll be an exciting game, uh, regardless. Uh, you know, state fans always love seeing a national brand come into Carter Finley. It just doesn't happen enough. So when it does, we we get a little extra amped for it, even with it being a new game. So I'm I'm excited to see how this is going to play out, and um, I definitely I definitely respect the Notre Dame brand. I don't fear it. Um, I welcome the challenge, and I'm excited to see what our team can do um, playing against a, a quote unquote traditional blue blood from the sport. So um, that'll wrap it up for us, Wolfpack Nation. Again. Uh, don't forget that uh, it may or may not be too late to get in on that contest that we're trying to go away with those tickets. So make sure you're liking and subscribing and commenting and doing all the things that you need to do to win that. And uh, we have all that laid out in the first couple of episodes uh, of this. And, uh, you know, and, and, and if you're participating in, con- in the contest, you've already liked, subscribed and done all that good stuff and given us good thumbs up and given us good juju. So we appreciate that. But uh, as always, Wolfpack Nation, we'll see you in the next episode and go pack.